Hello, I'm Lisa Jagona and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's episode, I would like to offer a demonstration of just how powerful your relationship tapestry has the potential to be if you could tap and strengthen your collective power. Please join me. Over the last few years, I've been telling my siblings that I can be my best when you are at your best. And this statement came from an awareness that I love them dearly and we are walking in this life together. There is no, um, there's going to be, there is no separating myself from them, right? And nor do I want to. And so when they are strong and secure in what they are doing in their life, I am more free to charge forward on the path that I'm on. And together we rise, right? So have you ever had an interaction where you just felt like things soured and you didn't really understand why things the way they went? Um, And I think part of that has to do with the fact that when people interact, they bring a lot of stuff into each interaction that has nothing to do with the person that they are interacting with at that moment. I think many of us are guilty of that where we bring things from work into our homes. We bring things from home into our work. We bring things from one friendship circle into another. And I think some of the conflicts that arise have to do with the fact that the other person, the person that we're interacting with, when we bring that other baggage in, isn't aware that we're lugging along this luggage. You know, all we hope is that they can be compassionate, right? So if you stick with me a little bit today, I'm gonna offer a demonstration and I'm gonna use a math concept to show you just how complex relationship dynamics can get even with just a few people and I think this awareness can help you be mindful and improve your empathy and compassion as you work to strengthen your personal power and your relationship power which builds to the collective power. To give you this demonstration I'm going to geek out a little bit but stick with me I promise you it will blow your mind at the end of it and it will make you appreciate your relationships so much by going through this exercise. So to demonstrate just how potentially powerful your relationship tapestry is, I want to just offer this really simple model that I created and it's going to look at relationship combinations. In mathematics, there's this concept of combinations which looks at the number of possible arrangements for any collection of items. Now we're talking about unique combinations, right? So where another concept in mathematics called permutations looks at A and B as different than B and A, combinations are saying, well, A and B and B and A are basically the same thing, right? And when when we're dealing with people, whether I say, I'm dealing with Trisha and Monica or Monica and Trisha, it's the same relationship. So that doesn't really matter. So combinations are looking at the unique arrangements or unique relationships that any set of numbers can have. So as I go through this demonstration, I want you to be thinking about your nuclear family or those people that are really close to you. And I want, I started thinking about this exercise because of a, an awareness that I am a compilation of the people that I've had the pleasure of meeting. And that started with my family and my siblings. So I'm going to start out really simple because my family's big. I'll get to my family in a second, but to start, just so you know, I'm going to input a number here and this is going to stay the same. And this line is going to show me Okay, so if I have six people, how many, so when two people are gathered, that's a one-on-one relationship. So if six people are gathered, how many one-on-one relationships does that create? That's going to populate that. And if there are six people, how many, how many combinations of three of them gathered is, is there? And then here is going to sum 
across and give you the total number of relationships that can that can exist when this number of people gather and so for example let's start really easy so let's say you have two people uh, Trisha and Monica if they are gathered there's only that one-on-one -on -one relationship so there's only one relationship that any two people can have okay now if you have a three-person household you can have a total of four relationships that's because there are three one-on-one -on -one relationships so that's person one and person two person one and person three and then person two and person three and then there's the unique relationship dynamic that is all of them gathered which is what that is so in total you have four different relationships so then let's say my for example my husband my husband has four people in his house in his nuclear family um, mom dad and brother right and there are six unique one-on-one -on -one relationships there are there are four different ways that any three of them can gather so for example there's mom dad and brother mom dad and husband mom brother and husband dad brother and husband so those are the four different ways that any three of them can gather and then then there's the re unique relationship where the four of them gather and that is its own different dynamics and so in total you have 11 relationship dynamics in a four-person household now I come from a big family I am the youngest of six and there so there's six siblings six siblings and if it was just the six of us we have a total of 57 different relationship dynamics that can exist when when we are gathering in different combinations right so there are 15 one-on-one -on -one relationships there are 20 different ways that any three of us can gather 15 different ways that any four of us can gather six different ways that any five of us can gather and then this special bond where all of us gather and that's that's a beautiful different dynamic than any other combination so in total there are 57 57 different ways and relationship dynamics amongst us and if you include my mom and dad um, so then they're eight that blows up the number to 247 possible relationship dynamics amongst us and it's just really incredible to think about it and sometimes I kind of feel it because sometimes I get the call when you know when somebody has had some relationship dynamic with another person I'm not privy to that but I get that call and I kind of sense that oh yeah I forgot like there's that dynamic happening but I'm only a I'm only aware or subject to a fraction of this and this exercise really made me um, aware of just how much you don't know even with the people closest to you and that's humbling but it also explains a lot of what happens in our relationships so while I use my nuclear family as an example you this this calculation can work with any any sort of group so it could be a friendship group a work group let's say you have a company that has 10 people all of a sudden you have 1013 different relationship dynamics that can exist amongst those 10 people and it can get really complicated because to tap into the power of this group there are many dynamics that have to be ma managed you have to know each other, each person's strength each person's weaknesses who likes each other who doesn't like each other who gets along and and you also kind of need to understand why don't they get along what's their history and what's going on and so this exercise is really humbling because once again you realize just how much you are not privy to when you are part of a group it makes you realize just how um, how dynamic relationships can be and when you're dealing with a person to be aware that you may be dealing with so much more than just the person standing in front of you. To wrap this up, to wrap this demonstration up, I do want to point out that behind this simple calculation of 
six people having 57 rela different relationship dynamics is something way more complicated that pulls in the many, many um, people people, individual people have with other people that aren't part of their nuclear. And so while I may be part of the 57 relationship dynamics within my um, sibling group, I am also part of the relationship dynamics with my husband's family, with my work family, with my, you know, external friendship circles. And so all that to say is energy from one circle that you're a part of can spread into other circles and sometimes one of the best ways to not allow bad feelings to spread from um, one circle to another is to heighten your self-awareness to know where your hurt feelings are coming from and develop your ability to restrict it to that area not allow feelings feelings of hurt to spread to other relationships you have because when you do that you're really you can you it's like wildfire you can just go around like yelling and screaming and just raging at people who do not understand do not deserve it but because you're in the hurt so much it's spreading like wildfire <laughs> from you um, and that really can, can, that's how you burn your tapestry and your networks right the the the, the inability to contain where the hurt comes from and understand where that is and not allow it to spread all over and also to to not believe that you know, one area, area, problems with one area of your life mean that everything in your life has to be destroyed. In fact, the only way to, to grow is to identify, okay, where am I having problems? Where am I having challenges? Then tap into the strengths of other areas of your life and be able to use those strengths to be able to fortify and strengthen and, um, begin to define ways to strengthen other areas of your life that don't feel as strong so i know i said a lot but um that's that's a really really important skill um to have in order to heighten your sense of power which is about your sense of um control over what is happening in your life, right? If you're allowing emotions from one circle, negative, negative bad feelings from to spread from one circle into another circle, you're really kind of raging and not not controlling, right? Not not controlling what is within your control, which is, yes, I'm, there's hurt. I'm not. I'm never denied that there's hurt. There's hurt, but that hurt doesn't need to spread everywhere right and so yes there's hurt at work because people are disrespectful demeaning etc but that doesn't mean that you need to spread it into your personal relationships now that's really hard because there are some areas where it's really toxic and you begin to absorb some of that toxicity and then you become somebody that you don't even recognize because you're so upset and angry at the from the toxicity so um it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy but it is a practice right so it's something that you continue improving upon and increasing your awareness around it um just noticing where the where the pain points are so to build your collective power we really have to choose to do things that elevate and uplift instead of tearing down and to do that we have to build on our individual sense of personal power and really the question is, what can I do to strengthen the bonds in the relationships that I have so that I can rebuild trust, ease the frustrations and tensions and anger that arise and make that relationship into something that benefits me and everybody else who's involved. So thank you so much. Do you remember to subscribe and if you know anybody who could benefit from stepping into their power, please pass this forward to them. And as always, thank you so much in solidarity.